Well, that's a really good segue to, to Harlan, who has grappled with this sustainability question directly uh, throughout your work at the NDIF, which I think is one of the more interesting models in this field of, of really trying to create sustainable, independent media in countries that, uh, that actually work in a way that uh, are, is, is quite an example for others. And I, I wonder what, you're, what, what are you taking from this conversation at this point? So I think this uh, focus on innovation the focus on, in, on innovation, I think, is, is key to the moment that we're in. Um, and um, I like the way you're changing, you're, you're putting the focus on how communities use information. Um, you know, for us, you know, we, we, we function as an so we provide financing for independent media companies, whether it's loan financing or equity financing. And so we're very much focused on uh, companies as, an, as a, a, a base of organization, as a focus of our effort. And uh, we believe companies uh, are, oh my God, my phone's off. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so we believe media companies are essential for creating information and processing it um, and developing it into uh, a, uh, a bucket of credible, reliable, useful content that people can use, right? And that can provide uh, robust platforms for debate. Um, the, the, the challenges that we've all heard about today already um, are real. Uh, the whole industry is in uh, dramatic flux. Um, and the question of, uh, you know, what business models in the future and what can work today are, are you know, really uh, serious questions. Um, I think, uh, you know, uh, Mark, before this, posed for me the question, you know, is there, such, is there any uh, way for independent media to be sustainable in the future? And I think it's a question that can only be answered um, yes, no, and maybe. Because mm -hmm. right? it really depends on uh, the specific country and the specific kind of medium. You know, television is different from radio, is different from print, is different from digital. And uh, you know, every country has a very different media economy, some of them can support different uh, versions of media that I've just went through, uh, and some can't. Um, and some might be able to, if not now, maybe down the road. Um, so we've been, um, in, in recent years, focusing a lot on I investing in uh, digital media startups, because we, we believe that it's important to try to find models that can work in these environments. Um, and the, you know, I think as time goes on, we are now starting to see models that have potential. So first of all, even here in the US and in the West, uh, it's very recent that those models are starting to take shape. You know, and you're actually starting now to finally see investment coming into digital media companies. Um, and you know, we see that starting to play out in other parts of the world. Um, uh, the, the whether that will bear fruit all the way, you know, because it's a very different environment here than it is over there, remains a big question. But we're seeing some interesting possibilities. Um, and the, you know, the, the key thing for, for you know, looking at digital media today is, going back to what you said, how does it connect up with people? Um, in, in a way, it's very easy. You know, uh, the internet makes it very easy to publish. Anybody can go and publish anything, anywhere, anytime. Um, what, what is a challenge is publishing information, creating information, and then connecting it with people, right? Because there's so many sources of information out there. There's so many pieces of content. As you said, we're flooded. Everybody is flooded with content. Um, so uh, creating an organization that has the capacity to both generate high quality information and then understand how to distribute it effectively uh, and how to monetize it. That's the challenge that the sector faces. That's what we are you know, really trying to focus our efforts on moving forward, both in identifying uh, you know, who has the potential to do those things, and then how can we help them do that better. Do you think this challenge that you're describing right now um, requires the same kind of institutional frameworks that, that exist for the traditional media in terms of, you know, one of the, one of the things that is still not 
constructed in most of the developing world is those basic practices and behaviors and laws, regulations and institutions that create a open system that is capable of uh, operating in an independent way that provides that level of uh, sort of uh, quality control and uh, uh, accountability and watchdog role and all of those kinds of things that come from that system. Is, do you think there will be a different kind of institutional framework for this new world that, that, is, that is coming now or do you think it will um, still require those basic um, laws, institutions, and uh, r regulatory framework that... I think it, uh, all those things will help a lot. You know, the enabling environment that we've all talked about for decades, mm -hmm. you know, developing in, around the world. It remains, uh, you know, I think a very important goal, but I think we all realize that, you know, uh, if anything, there's retrenchment yeah. in different parts of the world. Um, but it's not, uh, it's not global, so there are parts of the world where things are advancing and getting better, and, and we can focus, you know, certain kinds of efforts where those opportunities exist. Um, in, in other parts of the world, you know, I've always been impressed with the uh, capacity of creative people to navigate those environments and find a way to produce mm. credible information in difficult straits. Um, the, the, and I, th and, you know, I think that uh, digital media represents as much of a ch an opportunity as it presents a challenge. You, know, you okay. can do things that you could never do before. It you know, lowers barriers to entry considerably. Uh, you can operate much more cheaply. Uh, uh, the, the, there are opportunities to um, disrupt existing uh, media sectors you know, where there are very, very long established players. Uh, digital media creates the possibility to make change there. Um, uh, Seema recently published a great report on Malaysia Kini, which uh, which is, is outside there. By the way, I think there were copies on the <clears throat> on the uh, table outside. So, so it's a great example. Malaysia Kini is a great example, exactly how uh, independent media uh, on the internet can disrupt an existing sector and become a major player in uh, a number of years and have a lot of impact um, and be sustainable over time. Um, I think a big question for us is, is Malaysia Kini a unique instance, and born in a unique moment in a unique place, or does it represent a model for the future? Um, one of the things that they've been able to do very effectively is uh, build you know, a real trust relationship with their audience. It's one of the things we think is key for sustainability going forward, um, where, where the more uh, news outlets can actually rely on their audience, for at least a significant part of their revenue, whether that's through you know, subscriptions or paywalls or membership. Uh, you know, we think that's one key to sustain sustainability going forward. And again, it goes to uh, both not only how you create your content, but how do you community around you and develop that trust relationship.